Hi, my name is John Doyle. I'm the Technical Manager at CAD Tech Systems. In this series of videos, we're going to explore some of the differences in the simulation capabilities that come in standard SOLIDWORKS and those that you get in the full simulation tools within SOLIDWORKS Premium. We're going to look at things like the ability to analyse assemblies or to use different types of meshing. In this first video, we want to concentrate on some of the different ways that we can restrain a model and also how we can look at the results. During a recent series of workshops, we started off by doing some hand calculations to explore some basic engineering concepts, but also to build confidence that the results that we get from Simulation Express are accurate and meaningful. So the first calculation we used was just to um, divide the force in a uh, just a simple bar that we're going to exert a tensile force on, just to look at the average stress in that bar. So we can see the calculation gives us a value of 102 megapascals. The second calculation was to look at, when we apply that force, how much the bar stretches by. So using Young's modulus, uh, again from the calculation here, we can see that gives us a, a deflection of 0.073 millimetres. And finally, using Poisson's ratio for alloy steel, we're also able to work out how much the thing squashes by when we stretch it. And that gives us a value of 0.0017 millimetres. So let's take a look inside of SOLIDWORKS and see how we can uh, get those results. OK, so here's that same bar inside of SOLIDWORKS and we're just going to use Simulation Express to apply that same tensile force. So the first step is to describe how the thing is going to be restrained. Now in Simulation Express the only thing that we can do is to apply a completely fixed restraint. So that will stop the bar moving, sliding, rotating in any direction. The next step is to apply our force. So as we discussed, this is going to be applied to the top face and is 50 kilonewtons. We then just confirm the material that we're using and we're ready to run. After a few seconds we get this exaggerated animation showing us what will happen when that force is applied. So clearly the bar is stretching and also squashing inwards as we do it. If we look closely at the bottom, we'll see because of the fixed restraint, it's not able to squash in at that point, and that is going to affect our results slightly. But for, for the time being, we're just going to continue and have a look at the stress results. Now, we calculated 102 megapascals, and it would appear at first glance that we're getting a different result of 122. But we can see from the colours that that's only around the bottom here. And again, this is because of the fixed restraint that we just discussed. If we look at the colours away from that area, we've kind of got this mucky green colour and we can see from our scale that that's going to be somewhere between 100 and 105 megapascals. So it's showing that Simulation Express is giving us exactly the same results that we calculated with our hand calculations. Moving on, if we were to look at the next thing we calculated, which was the displacement, we had a value of 0 0.073 millimetres and again we can see we're getting very very close to that with Simulation Express we've got 0 0.0723 so very close again now the third thing that we looked at was to see how much the thing contracts or squashes by as we apply that tensile force there's no way of actually visualizing that result in, in Simulation Express we'll see in a few moments how we can do that in SOLIDWORKS Premium so we've seen in Simulation Express how we're able to get meaningful and accurate results that compare well to our hand calculations. But there were a couple of discrepancies, um, mainly caused by the limitation that we're only able to use a fixed restraint at the bottom of our bar. So let's have a look now in uh, SOLIDWORKS Premium and see how we can do the same test again uh, and see how that compares. So here we've got the same bar. Again, we're just going to create a simple study. And the setup's pretty much the same, we've applied our material, we're going to apply our fixtures, and here you can see that it's defaulting to the same kind of restraint that we used in Simulation Express. But what I want to do is to allow the bar to contract at the bottom, so we don't want to use a fixed restraint. So instead I'm going to choose this one here, called a roller, sl a roller slider. So we'll apply that to these faces at the bottom of our bar. Now the only problem with that, if we imagine that this was our bar sat on, the, uh, sat on the desk here, when we apply the force, there's actually nothing stopping the thing from sliding around. So somehow we need to tell the software that it's not able to move. 
If I do that to the whole of the face, then we're going to be back in the same problem that we had in Express. Let's have a look at how we do that inside of uh, SolidWorks Premium. So we're going to, again, we're going to apply a, a fixture, but this time we're going to use one of the advanced fixtures because I don't want I only wanted to stop it moving in certain directions. So here we'll choose the Use Reference Geometry option. Now the reason I've split the face at the bottom here is so that I can just pick the point in the center. So I only want to stop that uh, central point moving, not the whole face. I'm going to fix it relative to our top plane. And we've already stopped it moving parallel to that plane. So what I want to do is choose the other two directions to stop it moving left and right or forwards and backwards. Then the rest of it is exactly the same as before. So we're going to apply a force to the top face of 50,000 newtons. And again, we'll just run our simulation. Now we're not presented immediately with that same animation showing us what's going on, but it'd be useful to compare it to Express. So I'm just going to edit our displacement plot to make sure that it's exaggerated and again animate it. And hopefully we can see this time that the bottom face is actually contracting. So we shouldn't have the same discrepancies in our stress results. So let's just go back to those stress results. And it does appear initially that we have got something slightly strange going on because we've got these yellow, red and blue colors in our bar. But if we look over at the scale on the right hand side, we can see that the values are only changing at the second decimal place and that really the stresses right the way through our bar are 101.6 or I guess if we round it to the same as our hand calculations 102 so we are getting exactly the same results another way we can just double check that is we can use something called the probe tool this allows me to pick points at specific locations and do a graph showing those and we can see we are getting exactly the same results of 101.635 again exactly the same as our hand calculations so moving on to the uh, to looking at the displacement again we get the same result as before which is 0 0.073 so again that's exactly the same as our hand calculations but in order to compare our simulation results to our final calculation which was the radial displacement or how much the bar is uh, squashed or contracted by we need to change the uh, displacement plot. The standard results are showing us how much the something called the resultant displacement, which is how much something has moved regardless of the direction. We actually want to look at our results um, in a cylindrical coordinate system because we just want to look at the radial displacement. In order to do that, we can pre-select the axes and then edit our displacement results. And if we look at X, that actually shows us the radial displacement. So we can now see that our highest displacement there at the bottom, because it's negative, is 0.0017 millimeters, which was exactly the value we calculated by hand. The results do look a bit strange there, though, because the highest displacement is in blue because it's negative. So we can just double click on the color chart. And if we change, choose this option down here to flip the results, then it might be a bit more sensible, a bit easier to understand. Hey, so hopefully you found that a useful example to help demonstrate some of the differences between Simulation Express and SolidWorks Premium. We saw how whilst both applications were able to give us correct results and results that compared well to our hand calculations, SolidWorks Premium just gives us a little bit more flexibility in terms of how we could restrain the model and also that how we can present the results. I hope you'll join me in some of our other videos to look at some of the other capabilities inside of SolidWorks Premium. Thank you.